cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And if you've been following my channel for long enough, you may remember this giant Galactop I made. First of all, Galactops are these air-powered spinning tops that I designed. And this is the largest one I had printed. Unfortunately, due to the design of this top, I couldn't really print it on any of my printers as a single part. So I had to print this in two parts, and I also had to have plastic support material, which was kind of annoying to remove. And, you know, there were problems, but I still got it to spin, and it was pretty cool. But the times have changed. Thanks to Matter Hackers and BCN, I now have a BCN Sigma printer. One of the coolest things about the BCN Sigma is that it has two independently moving extruders. Not only does that mean I can print with two colors, which is already very cool, but I can print with two completely different materials. What I'm trying to get at is that I now have the capability to print a top like this with a dissolvable support material, and I can print it as a single part. Because of that, I thought it would be great to revisit this giant Galact top and make another one, maybe a little bigger. This time, I decided to make a scaled up version of my Pulsar top. I had trouble controlling that other one with the leaf blower when it was giant. The coolest thing about this pulsar top is it's got this little spike on top, so with the tiny version you can put the straw right over it and hold it in place. And in the giant version I'll be able to use a leaf blower and hold it in the same way, so that I have a little more control as I'm revving this thing up. I kind of decided to do this in the spur of the moment, so I didn't actually redesign the pulsar top at all. I just scaled this model up to be about as big as I could possibly make it on the BCN Sigma. And while I'll print my giant Pulsar top in PLA, just like this giant Andromeda, I'm going to be using PVA material for the supports. PVA is often used for those little glue sticks, but it's also available as a material for printing with. It's water soluble, so all you got to do is dunk the model after it's printed and kind of just let the material dissolve away until hopefully you're left with just your PLA part in amazing, pristine quality with no weird artifacts since everything was held up perfectly by that support material. That's the idea. So let's go ahead and try it out and see what I get. So here's what the model looks like just after it finished printing. Unfortunately my time lapse messed up, but as you can see it printed both materials together flawlessly. And the PVA, since it's essentially dried glue, it sticks really well to the build plate. And check out this cool effect. I think it looks holographic or something. I'm gonna have to use that for a future model. But in any case, everything came out really well, so I just have to wash away the support material. To do that, I filled up my sink and just let the water run over it. I tried to peel it off right away, but it wasn't working just yet, so I think I have to leave it soaking for a while. This PVA support material kind of looks and feels like half-cooked pasta. And while it didn't just fall off the model, it was easy enough to scrape it all off once I had soaked it long enough. And if I left it in the water even longer, it would probably be easier to remove. I was just kind of impatient. So I used my pliers and tweezers to pull off all the gunk. And I was left with a pretty perfect model. Now, I used a lot of support material here, so as you can see I had a sink full of this gunk. And I put it in a bag and threw that out in the trash instead of risking clogging my sink. While the model looks great, it was spinning pretty wobbly. And that was mostly to do with the very tip of the model, the one part that didn't print out perfectly. But that's okay because I was planning to put a BB on the tip anyways to help it spin longer. So I used my Dremel to carve out a little tiny hole so that I could stick the BB in there. And although I was just eyeballing this, I did use the lines that the layers make to make the hole very well centered. Because of course that's critical for this thing to spin as long as possible. Also I should have randomized the layer start points, but I had them all lined up on this one side. So that created a little bit of asymmetry and a little extra material on that side. But I decided to give it a test spin anyways. I'm just using a shop vacuum, but set to blow air instead of sucking it up. And as you can see, I got a pretty good spin out of my Galactop. There was still a bit of wobbliness, so I went ahead and sanded down those layer start points to remove some of that excess material 
and hopefully balance everything out. And sure enough, that created some more improvement in the spin. My final technique for reaching equilibrium was inspired by the way potters center their pieces on a pottery wheel, resting the sandpaper just on the edge of the top so that whatever point was sticking out would get sanded down until everything was a bit more evened out. And I put a little dot of lube on the tip of the top because that couldn't hurt. With all these things combined, I got a pretty solid spin out of this giant top. So now that I have a balance that I'm happy with, it's time to try out a more powerful air source, the leaf blower. And while the opening is an oval, I figured I would just try it as is and see if I can have any control over this top. And I realized pretty quickly that it was super powerful and I was gonna have trouble controlling this unless I did some modifications. So I went ahead and printed out this giant adapter to go on the end of my leaf blower. That way I have this circular tip that I can use to hold the top in place. And for the sake of experimentation, I also printed out another version that has this kind of vortex tip to see if that would help it spin faster. All right, so we've got the top as balanced as I could get it. We've got the modified leaf blower attachment to make this spin as fast as we possibly can. And I've constructed this makeshift arena here in the garage. So there's nothing left to do but spin these things and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna start with the old top that I made in my very first Galact Top video, just to make sure it doesn't go completely berserk and destroy the top right away. So it was pretty clear that controlling the Andromeda top is not easy with this leaf blower attachment. After all, that's why I printed my Pulsar top this time around. So let's see how that compares. Definitely much more controlled and a much better spin. I didn't have the perfect surface to spin on, but I was still getting a solid minute of spinning from this top. That's a good one. Of course, I tried out my other leaf blower attachment as well and it also worked really great, but there wasn't really a noticeable improvement. So going forward, I decided just to use the circular nozzle as I figured it would wear down less on the top. So we only have one of these giant galactops tops that is actually easy enough to spin with the leaf blower. The Andromeda one is too hard to hold in place, but this one works really well. But since we don't have two to battle each other, the next best thing is to weaponize this. So I'm gonna stick some razors onto this and we'll surround it by some cardboard boxes and see what kind of damage it does. So I decided to attach these blades by screwing them onto the top. So the first thing I did was mark a point along all the little fins so that I can have evenly spaced holes. I used my drill press to carefully drill through the fins so that I have a pilot hole going all the way through the edge of the top. That makes it easier for me to screw these in through the top surface without cracking the plastic. Then I just had to go around and attach all 12 of these blades. And the result was frighteningly awesome. So now it's time for the ultimate face-off. The world's first weaponized Galactop versus the most sinister carrot you've ever seen. Yeah, that's an evil looking carrot. Standing between the two of them, some balloony goons and the impenetrable cardboard fort. They said no one would ever make it through. Does this new Galactop stand a chance? Let's find out. The first attack was quick and determined, although it stopped just short of cutting the carrot. So it was back to the front to take care of the rest of the goons. And in the end, a 
albeit with a bit of assistance, the Galactop did take down that vicious vegetable. Yep, just another day in the office. <laughs> oh man, what a mess. Well, you guys all asked for it. Stick some blades on the Galactop, and I did it. I stick some blades on the biggest Galactop I've ever made, so I hope you're happy. Uh, I now have created the most dangerous print in my collection. As I said at the beginning of this video, this model was just a scaled up version of my original Pulsar. So there are definitely things I could do to further improve this thing. I could probably make all these little fins a little thinner. And I could also use variable support to make the outer edges of the top heavier than the inside. Which would help with the inertia and keep this thing spinning a little longer. But honestly, I just want to print a giant top like this in stainless steel. Unfortunately, that still would cost probably like thousands of dollars. A heavy stainless steel version of this top would spin like forever. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it would actually spin forever. If anyone wants to fund that for me, just shoot me an email and we'll make it happen. I promise. If you guys have other ideas of how I can make this thing spin even longer, let me know. I want to go for a record. I don't know what the record is for the longest spinning top, but I want to set it. Anyways, I'm going to lock this thing far away in storage before I slice myself open. This thing is a true weapon. I'll be honest, I had a lot of fun making this. I am a designer, but I'm also still a boy, and I love destruction. Especially when it looks so beautiful. Alright guys, that's it for this episode. If you want to download some models like this to 3D print yourself, you can check out my page at myminifactory.com. I'm a Studios member, so I get to offer you guys files for free, and I still make commission when you download them. I think that's pretty awesome. Although I do not condone scaling it up and adding a bunch of razor blades. That's dangerous. Leave it to me, okay? Alright, until next time, I'm Devin. This has been Make Anything. Don't you ever forget to stay inspired.